Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a broom finished patio slab. Now we did all the forming and the prep here. We put the styrofoam down. We put the ISO strip up against the building. That's that white foam up against the building. We set the forms, put in the pins, set everything to grade. The reason we use styrofoam under our patio slabs is we live in Maine. We get a lot of freeze and thaw from December to about March. And that two inches of styrofoam helps keep the ground underneath the patio from freezing so the concrete doesn't heave. So that's why we use styrofoam under there. Um, we're going to pour 4,000 PSI concrete for this job. We also got fiber mesh in it and we have air entrainment in it. The air entrainment also helps with the freeze and thaw. It's like a chemical additive they put in there that that puts these tiny little microscopic air bubbles in the concrete and they allow water to get in the concrete freeze up expand without popping the surface off the concrete so I, all of our exterior concrete has air entrainment in it now this thing's probably about I think if I remember right it was about 10 8 or 10 feet wide about 45 feet long 6 inches thick the edges were thickened to 12 inches thick as you, we use 2 by 12s for forms we also tied a mat, a rebar in there, number four rebar, half inch, and we're going to get this thing poured. We're using a conveyor truck today. That was the only access we had was way over there. The conveyor it goes about 40 feet, so it almost, it almost reached the whole thing. We had to pull a little bit right here in the beginning. Now I'm magging the edges. We set the forms right to grade to make screeding this thing pretty easy. And I have to wet screed up against the building, so we're magging... We're matching the floor inside the building. This is actually going to be a brewery. So it's kind of a commercial type project for us. But they wanted this is going to kind of be, kind of be the, what their loading dock patio slab is going to be out back. We also did another big one out front. But right now I'm just kicking, kick screeding the concrete, getting the holes filled. And Luke's gonna pull up some concrete for me. Then he's gonna jump in here and help me help me get this screeded. The good thing about it, the conveyor is, you know, the conveyor goes at a pretty even pace. It's not too fast. It's not too slow. So, you know, one guy can kind of control that boot on the conveyor and get the concrete in place, and then the other guy or two can go ahead and do something else if they need to, like screed or mag or bull float. You can see I'm over there screeding off the form. You can see how easy that is when you set the forms right to grade. This is a pretty good mix. You know, we use this company quite a bit. Their mix closes up pretty good when you bull float it, and that just helps make finishing a little bit easier. You typically don't have to bull float back and forth, you know, much more than just once like I'm doing right here to close things up. And then uh, sometimes if if we if we see it's not closing up good, we'll go right over it again, just like I did right there. But then we'll just set it over and just keep going. Now, when we pick up the bull float, you know, when you pick it up, it leaves a little bit of a mark there, but it also leaves a little bit of a dip. So that's why I'm magging that out. You don't want that dip to. You know, you don't want to leave that dip and then have the concrete cure up, then try to mag it out later. Then you'll be trying to fill in a low spot. So typically right after we bull float, you know, we'll, we'll mag out that mark. And then if there's anything else on the edge we need to mag float out, we'll get that cleaned up too right, right now and get it over with. We're just lightly, we're lightly uh, tamping those edges and, and poking that concrete in there to fill any voids. We don't want the forms to bow out. You know, we got we got quite a few pins in there. We got some kickers on there, but there's a lot of pressure on those two by twelves, and they'll bow out pretty easily if you if you tap on them too hard or if you vibrate them too hard. You see, Darren jumped on the screed with me now, and now we're gonna get that screeded, get it finished up, and I'll get it bow floated. Then we're gonna move right on to the finishing part of this.
there. So that finishes up that finishes up the pour. And then what we did was we gave that about an hour. We went out front, poured the little one out front, gave this one about an hour, hour and a half, and then we came back and we cut these joints in. Now we pre-cut them earlier when the concrete was pretty soft. So now what Darren's doing is he's just going back through and through them to open them up a little bit, clean them up, make sure they look nice and neat. And then Luke's getting on there with his skids and he's mag floating the surface out, getting it getting it to a really nice firm, what we call a firm paste, so we can put a nice light broom finish on this. We don't want to broom it too early, we don't want to broom it too wet. Otherwise we'll roll the stone or the aggregate right at the surface. And that just really doesn't look good. We, we don't typically steel trowel our exterior surfaces here because if we do, you know, the steel trowel will really close up the surface tight. And sometimes that'll trap that air entrainment below the surface, right below the surface and create a little bit of a blister. And then that'll pop, you know, a week from now, a month from now, two months from now, and it'll start scaling the surface. So by mag floating the surface twice, the surface kind of stays open and breathable. It doesn't trap any air underneath there. Basically a timing thing, you know, you want to get you want to get it mag floated out, get your bull float lines out, get the surface all cleaned up. Then you want it to let it set up and cure up enough so your broom marks look really good. But you don't want it to cure too much. Like if this was in the sun, um, we probably would have had this all done already. We wouldn't have been able to leave it quite so long, but because it's all in the shade, we could leave it for quite a while in between the two mag floats. It mag floats, you know, pretty easy when you time it just right. What Luke's doing now is he's taking a little broom and he's making sure he's getting up tight to all the corners, up tight up against the building. Sometimes when you use a two foot or a three foot broom like I'm using there to broom the, the majority of this, it leaves like a half inch or a, or a one inch space up against the building because the broom just doesn't fit tight up against that sometimes. We also don't let the concrete, the surface of the concrete sit for very long after it's mag floated. We don't like it to dry out. Sometimes if, it, if, you let it, if you let it sit too long and dry out, you don't have the nice clean broom marks as you do if you broom it when it's kind of still moist right after he mag floats it out like this. I also pull the broom back really slow. I try to pull it back slow and even. I don't want to wiggle it. I don't want to bump it. I don't want to stop and start it. Just nice and even when I pull it back. And then Darren's following me up with a with a little edger, just giving that edge a little rounded. Now we pre-edged it earlier, like we did when we pre-cut the joints. So now he's just cleaning them up and putting a little finish mark on it. We'll leave that finish mark around the edge. Those skids work really, really nice for doing this type of work. If you don't have those, you know, you can get, I got a link down in the description, you can get them or you can get them online at, you know, most concrete supply stores sell those. You can see how much nice cream and paste that stuff has on the surface over there, Luke's. As he mag floats that out, you know, he can use that to, to really fill in anything he needs to fill in or or leave me a really good surface to broom with when he when he mag floats it out. You can see his mag marks and then you can see me brooming over him and just how nice that broom leaves us a broom surface on that. That's a really good texture for here in Maine. You know, when we get snow on it or ice on it or freezing rain on it, that's a good texture for them so they won't slip and fall. So this is how we pour a, and finish a nice, easy uh, broom-finished concrete patio slab. 
I saw that. Now, if you want more information on this, you know, check out this video that's popping up right here, guys. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. DJ Prescott job the other day. Well, Joy wants us to do a little bit of patching out there on some of the older floors. Yeah. Boy, that was quite a project. <coughs> Those floors are nice. He did, he did that Ashford uh, densifying hardener on them. Yeah. And they look like they're polished. Yeah. Really nice looking.